you're watching Left, Right and Center. I'm Nidhi Razdan. On the show tonight, Indian industry slams the CBI's move to file an FIR against one of the country's most respected industrialists, Kumar Mangalam Birla, in the coal scam. Will this really dent business confidence as they say? Is industry being hounded or is everybody jumping the gun? That's going to be our big focus over the next 60 minutes and let's bring you the latest. Where CBI sources today say they are now also investigating a letter that Orissa Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik wrote to the Prime Minister in 2005, lobbying for Birla's Hindalco group to get a coal block. The case against Mr. Birla has already raised a lot of eyebrows since it appears to be based only on his representations to the government and a meeting with the coal secretary. Except, as his company and many argue, it's not exactly illegal to make your case before authorities. So the question is, what evidence is the CBI basing this on? Similarly, the charge against the former coal secretary PC Parekh has created a storm since he was the official fighting for transparency and a bidding process in the coal block allocations. Sunetra Chaudhary has the latest uh, on this developing story right now. Sunetra, first on, on the issue of Naveen Patnaik and that letter, what are the CBI saying exactly? Well, that letter accessed by my colleague Rahul Shivastav is very, very interesting because it is written on the 17th of August 2005. Ostensibly, it looks like a regular letter because it has been, a lot of chief ministers have recommended, and in fact, as you said, Naveen Patnaik has said that he only wrote it because it was he was recommending it. It was good investment for his state, and it didn't. The main decision lay with the centre. However, why CBI says the CBI's version is that look one in the decision making pro process which overturned the screening commission committee. Now the usual process of allocation is that the screening committee, which is headed by the coal secretary, which was P C Parekh takes a decision and that screening committee has members from the states, has members from the centre, from various ministries and of course we know that power ministry had a completely different version. The power ministry wanted to go to PSU so that they could set up a power plan. So power ministry and all the other ministries, they are part of the screening committee. The screening committee had decided to reject Hindalco, Birla's group and give it to uh, the PSUs and so this was then turned around. This was after that meeting, what CBI says, after that meeting with Kumar Mangalam Birla. Now what CBI says, why they are now investigating and also probing, why Naveen Patnaik's letter is part of the probe is, in that decision overturning the screening committee, part of the thing, this letter is also there. So they are saying, let us look at the fact, because this form part of the process that Patnaik, that PC Parikh used, that's why we're going to see how much of an influence it was. So it is interesting, it is crucial. They're not ruling out, they haven't decided yet. They're saying there's no decision taken whether they'll be speaking with the chief minister or not. But it, it does make the case a bit more complicated, than they? So Nathan, one final follow-up question, which is that w what more evidence are they really citing, if they are at all, about the case against Mr. Birla? Because, uh, as I said earlier, at the moment, many are arguing, industry is certainly arguing that they feel it's a weak case. But is the CBI saying that there's more to it than just these meetings that have taken place and letters written? Well, CBI seems very confident. In fact, in the face of various industry uh, captains coming out and slamming CBI, in the face of the government uh, issuing various statements, whether it is Arun Sharma, today we had Narayan Sami, we also have Sachin Pilot, all of them speaking up for the kind of negative mood that this move by CBI has generated. At the face of it, CBI is standing firm. Uh, we have various uh, senior officers and the CBI is standing together and saying, look, we have evidence. And this is what we're going by. What Parikh says and what Kumara Mingram Birla have said, when they are called in for questioning, we will take that into account. But they're standing by it. And of course, they're also talking about the fact that they have recovered some other documents and also that money, 25 crores that have uh, recovered from the office, which they've then passed on to the income tax. But this FIR, uh, a lot of people have criticized it. There are also some uh, uh, you know, other references as well. For instance, the CBI talks about competent authority that has changed various guidelines in the thing. They're not specifying who the competent authority is, but they're saying it's obviously, it's not, it's authorities above uh, the coal ministry because uh, the coal secretary was the last word over there. So are they also talking about the prime minister's office? We just have to wait and see. What we do know from our CBI sources is that when pointedly asked whether they'll be calling in PMO officials because of the kind of allegations that right. were made by PC Parak, they did not rule that out. 
All right, let's see what the next twist in this case will be. Sunitra, thanks very much for that. And let's actually just hear what Naveen Patnaik has just told reporters just a few minutes ago on that letter that he wrote to the Prime Minister on Hindalco. And he made it clear that while he had, had a right to make a recommendation, ultimately the decision was the centre's. The letter that was written to the central government was to examine the requests of Hindalco. And I want to clarify that the powers of allocating coal blocks lies with the central government. And no information at all has been received from the CBI about questioning or otherwise. Meanwhile, India Inc. has been strongly protesting over the last two days against that FIR against Mr. Birla. Corporate bigwigs and others have come out in his support and spoken about the dangers now to Indian business. The biggest names of corporate India united in support of industrialist Kumar Mangalam Birla, saying CBI's move to file an FIR against him in the coal allocation scam is most unfortunate. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it will affect investor sentiment. I don't think this was called for. I don't think an FIR should be filed against a very well-respected businessman and a very well-respected group until uh, uh, a full case is established. Industry body Fiki even put out a strongly worded statement saying capable and highly regarded officers and business leaders cannot be made scapegoats of mere suspicion and misconstrued actions. Such developments dent the national psyche and also damper investor confidence, both domestic and foreign. Purely make a recommendation, as seems to be suggested right now, as the grounds for drawing a, a senior icon and a well-respected one. And the outcomes therein, in terms of actions now going forward, are particularly worrying. Support for Birla has moved beyond corporate circles. Even the government admits CBI's move is not in the country's interest. Kumar Mangalam Birla are held in very high esteem in India and abroad. If an atmosphere of fear and suspicion is created, I'm talking of an environment, an right. ecosystem, right. this country will suffer. India simply cannot afford more negativity at a time when the economy is in the midst of a stubborn slowdown. Already many industry leaders, including Mr. Birla, are on record to say India's policy environment is simply not conducive to doing business. It's not a very positive uh, investment climate. It's not a very positive uh, environment for uh, Indian industry to be working in. And it's tough to get clearances. Uh, you know, you could have a situation where you have a license and then the government goes back on it. For now, Mr. Birla has the backing of corporate India that wants CBI to justify the grounds for its action. In New Delhi, Shweta Rajpal Kohli, NDTV. Well, uh, here with us uh, to talk about this entire case and how befuddling it has become to some, we have our two analysts here in the studio with us, senior journalist Mihir Sharma, associate editor of the Business Standard, Paranjoy Guha Thakurta, well-known commentator and economist. Also with us, Anand Gadgil, spokesperson of the Congress Party, and Pinaki Mishra, Lok Sabha MP of the BJD. Pinaki Mishra, let me ask you first. We've seen Naveen Patnayak reacting to this. Now, you followed this case uh, very closely, Pinaki. Uh, do you believe it's taking some absurd twists and turns or that there are some overreactions as well. After all, it is a Supreme Court monitored probe. Let's all wait for the outcome. You know, Nidhi, <clears throat> you used the word befuddle in your opening preface and then you've said uh, bizarre twists and turns. Uh, you know, this just about encapsulates what we are hearing today. Uh, there are, you know, there are two opinions on this, I, I believe. One is either this is just so absurd and so bizarre uh, and sometimes it is typical of the CBI to to act in this manner. They have in many cases acted in this manner. We have too short a time now for me to explain how many cases this has been done. But number two, this could well be in the alternative, a very insidious attempt at actually roping in the grain with the chaff to ensure that when, when absolutely blameless people are sought to be roped into this scope and ambit of the inquiry, eventually the waters will get so murky and obviously people who are blameless are bound to be exonerated. I think a lot of people who were fly-by-night operators, who the CAG had indicted, who this, this Supreme Court monitoring is for what? Let's understand. It is to pin wrongdoing. 
non transparent methods were used to favor some people who were not end users who were really fly by night operators who were speculators who were using the system for immediate monetary advantage now that is different from end users who uh, you know eventually no, were putting up hundreds of thousands of crores worth of when you say that, that they're trying to bring in uh, ensuring that blameless people are roped into this are you saying that's deliberately being done by the government because this the heat could turn on the prime minister <laughs> i don't know i can't second guess why this is happening <laughs> but i can only uh, you know it's an educated guess that eventually bring in so many you know very respectable people people whose integrity is unimpeachable i mean to think that navin patnaik uh, you know could be part of anything corrupt is really so laughable and bizarre because i mean everybody knows his personal integrity is absolutely unimpeachable and, and look at the letter that he has written it you know he's written dozens of letters of the same genre to the prime minister for canvassing for dozens of projects because we've got some 50 odd mous coming out of orissa